Let's go. SW20 now finally hit 384,000 miles. Look at that, guys. Savage. Hello, and welcome to the channel. Today, we will attempt to change the brake rotors and brake pads on the 91 Toyota MR2. I have new pads and new rotors all ready to go. As you can see, we have new disc brakes and we have pads right here. So we'll be changing them. These are by Dynamic Friction and these were just some eBay rotors that I got for the meantime. So we'll be changing them. So I have my little tent set up and getting ready to start jacking up the car. We'll be trying to do the rears first and then I'll do an attempt on the fronts. So lifting up the MR2 is such a process because this car is low and it doesn't help that I have a low profile jack. It takes two step process to lift this up. I use this wood to give it enough you know, height and to also protect the jack and the car. I lift it up just high enough for these two uh, towers just to go underneath it. And then now that I have it up in the air, secured, right? Emphasis on secured. I have to do is now flip this wood and jack it up like this so I can get even more height. Look at that, I barely have any clearance, so I'm gonna jack it up just a little bit more just to have enough room. That is sketchy as F, bruh. Oh my gosh, I don't trust that. Just now realizing too, I'm a big clown. I forgot to loosen the lug nuts, so I have to redo this whole process all over again. I'm not gonna reshow it. But uh, yeah, I have, to, I have to undo what I just did now, which I mean, I'm only halfway there, but I've totally forgot to undo the, the lug nuts. So we have the car up in the air, all four wheels are off. So now the car is completely off of the ground. So what I'm gonna be doing, um, I already lubricated some of these. I'm gonna spray some more and I'm gonna Spray some more PB Blaster, you know, the sacred juice that we use here up in the Salty Belt area, the sacred juice. We're gonna spray PB Blaster and all the bolts. Let that sit. We're gonna work on the rears first, but you know, for the meantime, I'm gonna let this soak in all of that because it's all, you know, crispy, rusty chips, you know, delicious chips. Rust chips are always great. So we're gonna spray all of those components. All of this is gonna be drenched in lubrication. I'm gonna um, scrub it down. Even, look at that, ew. Ew, ew. So yeah, we're gonna definitely lubricate all of these little parts. Obviously you don't wanna lubricate the new pads and rotors. What I'm noticing, the pads in the front are actually really, really solid still. They have like a lot of a uh, pad left compared to the rear. The rears are just gone, really. I mean, there. this one has a little bit still left there, but this side is probably the worst. This side is the one that, look at that, that has like nothing. Uh, I don't I guess because these need needed to be lubricated up here or need to be lubricated up there those pins maybe that's what's holding it but yeah we're gonna lubricate all of them as you can see it, it's all it's all off the ground I've been having issues where I can't go into first gear uh, I have to put it into second gear then I can put it into first and like nothing it's like it's in first again uh, and I think this is the problem there's supposed to be two nuts right there and that holds one of the shift links so it doesn't have any of that my drain plug is also leaking which is a good sign that it's actually working and there's pressure inside and also a bad thing because it's leaking just for the brake part lubricant i was trying to look for this i couldn't find it but i was able to find one today and here are for the shifter cable links that you know are missing the nuts so here they are that's the size i have this copper wire that's going to hold the caliper up in the air the way that you take this off uh, there's only one nut that you have to undo. You don't have to take off. There's no nut on this side. This is, you know, it's just a swivel joint. 
So from here, I will use a 12 millimeter socket, take off this mechanism, and then you undo this one. I think this is like a 13 or a 14 millimeter bolt. Uh, so you'll take off this bracket right here, and then you'll take off the cotter pin that goes underneath here, and then be able to pop this pin out. So this will be disconnected, and then this will be disconnected from the caliper because that's how the e-brake mechanism works. And it's not that bad, it's just that because it's clapped out with rust and whatever, it's just it's just a pain. So I, you can still, if you're just doing rotors and brake pads, you can still do it without taking those things out. But I knew in the near future, that's what I have to do for this car, especially if I'm gonna change the calipers one day. Here's one of the brake pads. Here's the other side of the brake pad. As you can see, it's bad. We have the brake caliper brackets right here. It's a 17 millimeter up here, and then there's another one down there. Um, I'm gonna see if I can take it out with my little air gun thingy. Um, I'm gonna give that a try. If not, then we're just gonna have to use brutal force and see how, how much leverage we can get out of it. So I was able to break free the nut. It was very hard. I had to use my breaker bar, so I'll be able to do that. Uh, and that one is freed up there as well. So I'm just now loosening, spraying some PV, PV blaster and just hoping for the best. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna clean it. Um, before I put it all back on, I'm gonna try to clean up all this crap that's around there. Ew, that is disgusting. Clean that threads, obviously, because that is disgusting. This is the rear driver's side as it clearly states on the little sticker. I already, it's cleaned, so this thing is ready to be installed because usually these have an oil film or something like that so that way it doesn't rust. Um, we're gonna install it back on the hub. I cleaned this little bracket here, so it's good to go to go back in there. I have the brake pads. So the way this works, the smaller brake pad, as you can see, this one, if I compare it with this other one, it's just a tad shorter. It's just a, a wee bit shorter. You can tell though, by the size and all that so these pads go on the back side and then this one goes on the front side um, it's you can clearly see it so same concept with these as you can you can tell the smaller ones are on the outside and this one the larger ones are on the inside so we had issues with the rear calipers mostly more in specific this side the passenger drivers the passenger rear side my old calipers it turns out they were um they were seized they weren't good anymore here is the old one luckily i had the new calipers so what's happening is uh, my uncle checked it in the inside and it's dry and rusted so which means this caliper wasn't good to begin with and we couldn't push it in so here's the thing the way this works you're supposed to twist this you turn it uh to push the piston in you, you turn it with the cube key or you can just use a wrench so these you do not push with a clamp like how you traditionally do with the pistons caliper pistons so this you need a tool or you can use a, a wrench that's what i used we used a 17 millimeter wrench uh, stuck it in between those two wedges like the openings of the wrench and just twist it. It, it works um, We did it in our case. It worked fine. I had ordered two Rear calipers which you know, I ordered them ahead of time. I said just in case I needed them and thank goodness I did uh, So these are the ones that I got I'm keeping these ones Because you can always rebuild these no one rebuilds them anymore, but you can rebuild them So that is what I'm going to do not today, but that, that is what I plan on doing in the future. Um, as you can see, we have the same old caliper bracket uh, for the e-brake on there. I could have used a new one, but we didn't bother to mess with them here. Because if I get new brake calipers, uh, new brake cables, then I have new hardware for it. So I just said, I just told them to just leave them on there so just so we can save some time. Came with a new banjo nut, banjo washers and all that. And now we have this side as well on the driver's side driver's side rear same concept uh, we were gonna use the old one but my old one has a little dent into that slider pin there was a dent on there and so this new caliper wasn't sliding in completely because of that little dent 
Um, the OEM one fit perfectly fine. There was no issue there, but because of these not being the same size or whatever, it didn't come in. So we had to use a new one. So see, it looks much better this way. But again, I'm keeping the OEM driver side as well, and I'm gonna uh, restore the old one. And as you can see, same old hardware, new bolt for it because it threads into it. Here in the front, we have to rebuild the front pistons because they were completely seized. So that's what I'm gonna do today. We're gonna rebuild the front caliper pistons. As you can see, they're off. I have them right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean these up really well. I bought a whole bunch of hardware. We bought brake fluid. I bought two of these just in case I needed them. Um, I bought more lubricants because I was running low. I brought sandpaper. 1,000 and 1,500 to sand the pistons. Here's the tool that I said that we needed, but I did not have handy, so I just went ahead and bought it. Like a brake bleeding kit, just in case we were to need it, because I don't have any of those little hoses. And um, yeah, here's the receipts, how much I paid for. I went to AutoZone, I ended up paying 43. Yep, this is at um, Pet Boys. So you can find these at Pet Boys. It was only $12.59, right there, piston cube tie, uh, tool. They're awful, look at that, that is disgusting. It's all, because it's been sitting for so long, it's just disgusting. Uh, same with this, look at that one. That one's even by far worse. Like that is gruesome, that is disgusting. So we're gonna rebuild them as best as we can and I figure, well, why not give it a try? We'll, we'll, give, it a, we'll give it a go. Uh, these are the pistons now uh, they're definitely a lot better now I've seen a lot of people do these and I don't think it's recommended to sand them but I wet sanded them by using 1000 grit and then I have a 1500 grit sandpaper that I've been wet sanding and just trying to get all the gunk out really as you can see my hand my fingers are pruny but I mean they cleaned it off really well you know my fingers are disgusting uh, but yeah it cleaned it up really well compared to um, it how it was before so I'm gonna keep trying to get some of this other gunk out of there as well as, um, well, these other pens, pretty good. I didn't even sand these down really. I just scraped them off, just break cleaned and scraped them. These are in far better condition. These are the right driver. I mean, they came out pretty well. So I didn't really have to do anything besides just regular, just cleaning with brake cleaner and just drying them off really. This is, these are already perfect as, as they are. So I don't have to do anything with that. I cleaned it off as best as I could. And uh, these are the results really. I don't know if you'll be able to even see them because the camera, but they're a lot cleaner than they were before. Um, yeah, I was trying to clean them as best as I can. So there, are, there's not a lot of gunk there anymore. I hope not. It's smooth so I can, you know, it's smooth. I made the dumb mistake of trying to, you know, I was flushing it out with water and it was starting to rust but luckily i used phosphoric acid and it denutralized all of it again this is still rusty a little bit because of the fact that i just uh i started scrubbing it you know taking it off but yeah i think it's pretty good i think that's as best as it's gonna get for the meantime i do plan on trying to get newer calipers but you know hey look this is the fun part too i broke off the valve now luckily it's still sealed so nothing's gonna leak off but i broke the dumb little thing um it's a 516's head and I was trying to take it off and I should have known better just look at that rust yeah so luckily it's still sealed it's not leaking so I'm gonna have we're gonna have to bleed it out through here through the actual brake line which is gonna suck but um, this luckily if I wanted to I could buy a brand new one a roll remanufactured left side 
because this is a Toyota OEM one. This is the left side. I can buy this. I can find it right now. It's available. The bummer part is I can't find the right one. For some reason, the right side of the caliper is the difficult one. I can't find another one of these. I, the left, I can easily find it, but not, not this. As you can see, I still got to clean that. I haven't even touched it yet. But that kind of gives you a before how it looks before I did the cleaning. And this, I think I'm just going to do a basic flush and scrub with a toothbrush. And now it's good as new. As you can see, this caliper now, well, it's, it's good as new now. Um, now what we have to do... Uh, the other one, as you can see, this one, I already cleaned it. It's already cleaned, and I already installed the first O-ring, as you can see. Um, once you install the first O-ring, you just put a little bit more lubricant on there, and it should be should be good to go. Now, you're going to have to play with it a little bit just to seep it in there. Don't force it in. Just play with it. Let it sit in there. Little by little, it should go in. And just pull it in and out just a little bit just to make sure it's sliding in well and lubricate it more if needed. So, yeah, I mean, that's how it lubricates it and all that stuff. So, just, you know, just keep adding more lubricant. Just keep messing with it. It has been about two weeks since I last showed you uh, the brake job that I was doing to this car. I had run, I ran into many issues. Issue number one was after all the parts were installed and all of this other stuff that was going on, this brake caliper was heating up or getting hotter than all the other ones, which is weird because at first, before we did any of the repair and calipers, this one was the one that was heating up the most and now i know why because it was the calipers obviously but now that we put the new calipers on for both sides it turns out this one was starting to heat up turns out that the e-brake that we put on was forcing the caliper to stay engaged and it was heating it up as you can see it was starting to discolored it's supposed to bleed the brakes based on the furthest point of the master cylinder master cylinder is located right there and the furthest of the wheel is the passenger rear side that's right there. So when you're going to bleed out the car, you're supposed to start off at this point, then work your way over here, go to the front passenger side, and then work your way to the driver's side. And that's how you bleed this MR2. Um, another, other people on the forum say it would help if you jack up the car to get the air bubbles through. Now, I don't know how true that is. I guess that is true. I didn't try that. Um, but yes, this was heating up. We fixed that problem. Now it wasn't heating up. Then this caliper started heating up. I'm like, what the heck is going on? It was starting to get discolored too because this wasn't discoloring and now it's discoloring. And which lead me to believe that it's the brake lines. Because the front ones are rebuilt, they get warm to the touch so they don't get hot. But I've noticed that the rear ones just get a slightly bit warmer than the ones in the front. Not hot. Not hot to the touch where it's going to burn your hand if you touch the rims. It, it gets slightly warmer. So the fronts get warm and then this gets slightly a little warmer if that makes any sense. Either way, I ordered the lines so we're going to do that job as well. Um, I just wanted to show you and close off this video because it's been, you know, a battle with this car trying to learn, trying to... This is the first brake job I've ever done, period. I've never... So this, you know, I'm learning things as I'm going on with this project car you know that's the whole point of a project you learn how to do things and i've always wanted to learn how to do brakes anyway but you know part of doing that is also hard because it's you know it's you, you run into issues and you get to learn how mechanics do things if you ever need them rock auto always has some good parts going on i bought these little things and it's also cool to how they give you this again i'm not sponsored by rock auto but they're really cool though i really like using i, I you know how i've always seen things say all parts for your car will ever need and all that collectors built you know i've used rock auto to pretty much bring this car back to its normality i also bought these these were the dust boot covers and shields because again no one sells these at autozone because no one rebuilds calipers apparently is what the guy was telling me so i have these um i just need the i just need the dust boot shielding Three hundred and eighty-four thousand, three hundred and thirty-five thousand miles what do you want to see more of this mr2 like again we're gonna just try to get it up and running bring it back to life which is running now but we're gonna we still have a whole bunch of other things that we still have to do like you know detailing obviously and yeah there's, there's a lot of work to be done for this car so i hope you enjoyed today's video i wanted to do a little closeout for the brake work of this thing i've been slacking on videos and been falling behind um but i'm trying to get organized and getting things done so as always browse the channel give us a like comment what would you want to see and as always i look forward to seeing you next video